Hello. Hi, my name is Dr. Chandra Smallwood, and thank you so much for coming to the Fear Fighter Workshop. You may hear my fan. It's hot in LA right now. I'm trying not to run the air conditioning because the electric prices are crazy high. If you're, you live here, you know. Anywhere, probably, you know. Okay, so let's get to it. So I have a group called Fear Fighter. And the reason why it's called Fear Fighter is I had anxiety for over 20 years, right? And anyone that has anxiety knows that one of the main feelings you feel is fear, fear and worry for the most part. So we want to fight that. I mean, we're always going to have fear and fear is what pushes us to the next level as well as stops us from going to the next level at times. So we want to fight the fear. We want to push through the fear. We want to make the fear a friend of ours, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So in this presentation, I want to talk about different ways that we can reduce anxiety in a general sense, because even though there are little things that we can do every once in a while, like, you know, because you may feel anxiety for a little bit, you know, or you may feel it for a long time, like every day for months. You want to be able to combat it the best you can until it eventually goes away. And anxiety can go away. Just remember that. A lot of people think that they have to live with it forever. You don't have to live with it forever. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Uh oh. Well, I was obviously not prepared to share my screen. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna go on the road to fighting fear. And it is a road, it is a journey. It is not something that can happen overnight. There are many tactics you can use to stop quick anxiety or overnight anxiety. But for the most part, we're gonna go on a journey. So if you have anxiety, comment below. Let me know what it feels like to you. Let me know how long you've had it, when it started. If you know those things, drop anything you would like to drop about anxiety in the chat. So who wants to learn about how to decrease the overwhelming anxiety feeling. Because if you ever felt anxious or even depressed, it takes over your whole world, right? You're like laser focused on an issue. You really don't know how to get through it at times, or you just feel stuck because you're just thinking about that over and over and over. You're, you're, you're fearing the past, you're fearing the future. You just can't focus on the present, right? So let's talk about decreasing that overall feeling. That'll be one of the, well, the steps that we, that I have will help to decrease this. Who wants to learn how to stay mindful and not fear the future? So anxiety is when people are either stuck in the past or stuck in the future. I read an article recently and it talked about how younger folks, well, people under like 60 are more mindful or they think about the future more because they feel like they have time. So they're always thinking about the future. They're scared about the future. They're happy about the future, but that is where, the, that is where they usually live is in the future. As when we get over 60, we know we don't have a whole bunch of time left. So we tend to focus on the present. We want to have, you know, we want to have our relationships in order. We want to travel. We want to have a good time in the moment. We want to be with our family, things like that. And then people who tend to be stuck in the past may have had a traumatic situation in the past 
or they've just had, you know, little situations because we've all been through many little itty bitty traumas, if not huge ones. And sometimes they just, we just don't let them go. Like, I'll never forget my first year of college. Well, not my first year, my second year of college. I moved to Los Angeles. I started going to USC. My first semester, I almost fell out of college because I was so, everything was brand new. I was living on my own with my boyfriend for the first time. We had moved out of our city for the first time. And that really stuck with me. I was like, dang, like, can I make it here? Like, you know, am I just not a strong working, like, like a, can I not work hard? Can I not get through these hard times? You know, and I had to really think about that. And that stayed with me for years and years. But, you know, eventually, I had to accept the fact that you know that was something that happened during that year or that semester and I made it through right because I got through I graduated I went back to graduate school I graduated again and everything was fine but I was so like embarrassed in my mind because I had worked so hard to get to that point and then it was like I could lose it right away like crazy right so that's one thing from my past that I had really had to get over. And it wasn't a huge traumatic situation, but it was still kind of traumatic. Add a comment at the bottom if there's something from your past that is stuck with you or something that in the future that you're afraid of. Who wants to learn how to decrease anxious moments more easily? Now, sometimes when we have certain types of anxiety, say generalized anxiety, which is an anxiety that is kind of there with us. Like it's kind of like sitting next to us like all day, every day for months to years at times. And it's just always there. And no matter what, there's always something that we feel, you know, fearful about or, our body feels tense like all the time and we don't know how to get over that. But, you know, a lot of that is very preventative, like to get through those times when you have an anxiety that sits with you all day or all month or all year. Whereas when you have something shorter, say maybe a social anxiety where, you know, you feel certain ways when you're only around people. I mean, that can come home with you, but usually when you get out of those situations, you feel better. That's a different type of tactic. That's a different type of way of getting through that anxiety. So I, you know, I have a program and I explore these different factors, these different ways, because we have to think about them differently. And as someone who has dealt with anxiety for how old am I? Half of my life, I've been through a lot of these moments and they really affected me and I've done a lot of research to get through them. And I wanna help anyone who needs it. So who wants to learn how to prioritize their needs over the needs of others? Who does this, right? especially if you're a mom or a parent, whose needs come first? Your children, which makes sense. They, you know, they, fin they can't fend for themselves. They're just sitting there. If, if you don't feed them, if you don't take care of them, then they're just left in the cold, right? <laughs> but then a lot of times after that, it's your spouse or your significant other. And so you're doing so much for your kids and so much for your, your significant other that you just don't have time for yourself. And then when you do have time for yourself, you're sleeping because that's all the time you have or you're trying to sleep. You know, we need to make sure that our needs are taken care of. Not necessarily we have to think of ourselves above them all the time, but we need to factor that in. I mean, come on, we can't just let ourselves go and not do anything, right? 
that and that is brings on anxiety like you would not believe your body's like um hello i'm here take care of me please <laughs> so we're going to talk about that as well we want a relaxation mindset and so my business is called the fitness mindset or the fitness mind because just like when we are to work out our body we have to be in a mindset of fitness right like we have to go to the gym we have to run we have to eat correctly we have to do things that help us to get in shape right like everyone knows it once it it goes from spring to summer you don't just all of a sudden have abs just because you want to have abs like you either worked through the winter and the spring for those abs or you just don't have them. So the same goes when we talk about anxiety in our mind. We have to work for that relaxation mindset. And a lot of times people don't think about that. You know, they think, okay, if I just think relaxation, it'll just be fine. Like I'll just have abs, I'll have mental abs just because I want to. That's not the way it works, especially when you've been stressed or you're fearful for a long time, your body's gotten used to that. Your body and your mind are like, what do you mean relax? We're scared all the time and you want me to just like switch it off and just relax? It takes practice. So did you know that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the US? The most common mental illness and a lot of that like there's there's debates now as if is anxiety mental or is it physical because when we're anxious we feel it physically and a lot of the ways you deal with your anxiety are physical ways because you know there are things that we can control or, or things that we can work on like you know it's not like we can go into our brain and start tightening things or you know, oiling gears or anything like that. We have to fix ourselves through repetition, practice, through various physical ways, right? And a lot of people don't realize that they're not doing that. Anxiety disorders are highly treatable, yet only less than 40% of those suffering receive treatment. And I think this has to do also with us going out there and treating ourselves. Because, I mean, I've seen a therapist a few times, but I've never had a long-term therapist. But I knew that I couldn't live like I was living anymore. And I had to go out there and find what I needed to find. Anxiety and different psychiatric disorders increase risk of hospitalization. They increase risk of death. The increased risk of morbidity, mortality, because you you have these hormones that are constantly increasing in your body. Did, drop a comment in the chat if you knew that, if you were aware of how dangerous anxiety can be in your life. My book called The Silent Suicide talks about that. And in a way, it is suicidal to not take care of our body and our mind, right? Just like, you know, if you are a diabetic and you don't take care of your body through your eating, it increases the risk of death. And nobody wants that. So we have to employ the same tactics here. So we have to be intentional about our journey to be anxiety free. If you're suffering, seek treatment. I have a wonderful program for you that I will talk about at the end. But for now, just get into a mindset of, hey, I feel this way and in order to feel better, I may need some help and that's okay. So first and foremost, I want you to think about focusing on your, yourself for at least 30 minutes every week. 
Can you write in the chat a day or a time when you can do something that you enjoy that's relaxing 30 minutes every week? I mean, like you're meditating, you're reading a book, you're sitting there staring at the wall, you're doing something where you can not necessarily turn off minds, but take it to a beautiful place, you know, where you can relax. You're not watching the news, you're not fighting with your kids, you're not running errands all over the city in traffic. You're just chilling. Write down a day that you think you can incorporate at least 30 minutes. Now this is minimum, you know, because every time you increase this time or you increase the days, you are getting in more practice. You're giving your mind and body more practice to not feel anxious, not feel fearful, not worried. So that's first and foremost. That's a little extra, not one of the steps, but that's one of the keys. So I want you to be intentional with your mental health by using four simple steps that we're gonna talk about. Step one. Step one is keep your breathing controlled. If you master your breathing, you'll master your anxiety. So you've probably heard of um, diaphragmatic breathing or just deep breathing in general. It is so powerful. You know, people talk about breathing like, oh my God, I breathe every day. It's, you know, not doing anything. But if you're intentional about your breathing, you would see the difference. So let's talk about some of the things that breathing is, deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. First, it decreases the sympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight. That's when there's a threat. You know, you're, I don't know, maybe you're in the street and you, or you see your child in the street and they're gonna get hit by a car. What do you do? You, all this adrenaline comes up, cortisol, all these hormones start happening, and you're like the superhuman running out there to save your child, right? That stress that you feel, that, that you're, you're, you know, you're scared, but you're able to act a lot of the time. Sometimes people freeze, sometimes people run, but it gives you the sensation to be able to fight, right? So when you decrease the sympathetic nervous system, you turn on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is like our rest and digest system. After you eat, you know, you feel a little tired, you feel relaxed. That's the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's what breathing helps to increase. So even if you haven't eaten or anything, you don't have the itis, you start your deep breathing and your sympathetic nervous system starts to relax. Next, it also activates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the longest nerve in your body. It starts way up here in your brain and it goes all the way down. Kind of looks like a tree, but it goes through your ears all through here and it's just connected to many structures. Now when your vagus nerve is activated, I know this may sound backwards, but when it's activated, you feel relaxed. So right there, that's two ways of relaxation just from breathing. Decreasing your brain chemicals, the sympathetic nervous system, as well as a nerve that travels through your whole body, the biggest nerve. Also, breathing is convenient. You know, you can do it anywhere, right? Like one of the places that I breathe because it's just been a fear of mine is on a plane. I can sit, if I feel panic coming, coming along, I can start my breathing. Usually people don't notice. If they do, it doesn't matter, but it's very convenient to me. There are also many different methods of breathing. 
I usually try to tell people about the 444 method because the method that's very similar to the way we actually breathe normally, because some of the ways to breathe can make you feel out of breath. And we don't recommend that all the time, you know, for certain people, such as women who are pregnant. We don't want them changing their oxygen level. So say like a 579, which is increasing for, I mean, inhaling for five, holding for seven, and releasing for nine. 444 is increasing for four, inhaling for four, holding for four, and then exhaling for four. So let's try that real quick. I'm gonna just do a quick demonstration and you can see what I mean. So if you're just learning to breathe, you wanna put one hand here on your heart and then one hand on your stomach, just so you can feel what's supposed to happen. So when you inhale, your stomach should protrude, it should come out because you're moving your diaphragm and you're filling your lungs with air. And then, so you're gonna hold, you'll just, you know, you're stationary. And then when you exhale, your stomach should go back in. Put a comment in the section if you've ever done diaphragmatic breathing and what kind you've done. Because that can definitely help someone because since there are many different methods, everything doesn't work for everybody. And some, somebody might understand why something that you do helps them better. But for now, let's just look at 444. So we're gonna inhale for four through our nose, hold for four, and then exhale through our mouth. The slower you exhale, the more relaxed you feel. So some people use pursed lips, as in lips like that are almost closed, to exhale slowly, but that might take you over the four seconds. It's up to you, you can try it. So inhale for four, so. Hold. Exhale for four. How did that feel? Did you feel a bit relaxed? Hopefully you did. If you did, drop, drop a comment, let me know. Or what did you feel? Drop that in the comments below. So moving on from that, we're gonna keep this with us on our road to fighting fear and we're gonna go to the next step. So step number two. Step number two is to write down your thoughts. Use any medium that resonates with you. So as in medium, as in write anywhere. If you have a journal, if you don't have a journal, you don't have to go buy a journal. You could grab some printer paper you can staple it in the corner or on the sides and you can write, you can type in your phone, write on a chalkboard, do whatever you need to do. However, when you write down your thoughts such as journaling, you do not judge yourself as much. A lot of times when we think about things, we have a lot of influences coming in. You know, what people say, you know, what people thought, what's happening on the TV, what's happening all over the place, right? When we write stuff down, we tend to be more centered. We tend to focus on what we're writing. You wanna write down everything about a situation. Say so something that just happened that bothered you, like something at work, per se. Write it down. How did you feel at the moment? How do you feel now? You know, how did it start? Were you scared? Were you happy and happy? Were you all of the above? Write down every emotion and then next to it, write down what that emotion, how it's being expressed in your body and your mind. Like, what are you feeling? You know, and give yourself time to just explore that and those emotions. 
you know, you'll write it down. It doesn't matter if it takes 30 minutes. And then from there, you can a lot of times move on. This, this works a lot for people who have past traumas that have just been sitting with them for a long time. You know, you write down how something may have started, um, what you went through, especially if it's from a long time ago, you may not remember as well as you think you do. So when you write it down, you can see, huh, maybe I did or didn't remember it this way. But either way, this is how I felt. Why, why am I still dealing with these feelings? Or what about what I felt at that time is still with me? And, you know, at that point, you work on it. And we, we, we try to heal from it as much as we can. Now, we may not always heal completely. Or when we do heal, we don't forget. The body never forgets. We can at times put a Band-Aid over it. But if we take that Band-Aid off after a few days, we have a scar, right? That's sometimes what happens to us mentally. We have mental scars. They're healed. They're not hurting anymore. But they're still there. Like We still know, right? So think about writing. Even if you've never written before, there's no wrong way to do it. You can write a song, a poem. You can scribble, draw, whatever you want to do. Just write it down. Secret or step number three. <laughs> so, so far we have, what do we have? We have breathing and we have writing it down. Water. Water goes into step number three. Step number three is diet and physical fitness. We are what we eat and how we move. Now I thought about this being a step because diet and physical fitness is its own challenge on its own for all of us, right? You know, even for me, physical fitness was really a big part of my anxiety journey and getting over anxiety. I made it a huge part of my life. I went to group classes. I, was, I had like a family at the gym. That's me. Um, but when COVID hit, I had a new baby and I didn't have that gym family anymore because they closed the gyms. And then 24 hour fitness fired all sorts of people. If you remember, if anyone who had 24 hour fitness, they fired so many of the trainers, <laughs> like, uh, okay. I have probably been to 24 hour fitness since 2020. I don't know, five times. I started working out at home because we couldn't leave, right? Um, but yeah, diet and physical fitness. No matter what, we can't eat badly, not drink our water, and feel healthy. It's, it's just really not possible. You may still be alive, but the quality of life is not the same as if we ate quality foods. And quality foods as in vegetables, fibers, fruits, lean meats, you know, even some dairy products every once in a while. But it's very, very important that we stay active and that we keep our mind on our diet. And that's hard, right? Because this is, this is really incorporating the fitness mind, the fitness mindset. Your, this is your physical fitness and your mental fitness together. But they are hand in hand, you know? They go hand in hand, and that's just how it is. There are lots of foods that decrease anxiety. You know, people are always talking about herbal this, natural that. But they're forgetting that there are foods that make you feel certain ways, right? Just like caffeine that's in different things makes you feel awake. Different foods make you feel relaxed, such as cherries. That's probably one of my favorite because they're so good. 
but cherries decrease anxiety. Just eat a bowl of cherries and see how you feel. Also, when you're anxious and stressed, your blood pressure goes up because you're letting off all of these hormones and steroids into your blood. The cortisol. Comment if you're familiar with cortisol and what you know about it. Because steroids in general, any steroid, even if you take like a, say a prednisone for sickness or asthma um, as a tablet, one of the side effects is increasing your blood pressure. So, when, but when you work out, even if you take walks, break, break a sweat walks, you know, I try to tell my patients because there's a difference if you're just, I mean, walking is, is good for you no matter what, but there's still a difference between a slow walk and a brisk walk, right? And if walking is your only means of physical fitness, let's try to keep it as brisk as possible. A lot of times after those walks, they'll notice that their blood pressure comes down. Why? Because they're more relaxed. Um, they have broken down many things in their body that cause stress. They have endorphins that have kicked in. Like there are so many reasons why physical fitness is great for you. We can talk about that later. However, for now, let's make this, try to make it the most healthy choices possible. Even if it's like, you know, people will say, take the stairs instead of the elevator, do that, you know, do that. Instead of being at home and asking your child to grab something for you, just get up and go. So moving on to step four, we have deep breathing. We have writing things down and we have diet and physical fitness. So step four are daily affirmations. And honestly, like daily affirmations is not something that I particularly like to do. I mean, I like to do it, but it's hard to remember because affirmations need to be done daily in order for them to really work. We want to love ourselves throughout our journeys. Even if we don't have anxiety, love yourself, be your own cheerleader, because if you're not, who will be? So let's talk about affirmations and what they are. Usually affirmations are I am statements that are in the present. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am abundant. I am so happy that I am making a thousand dollars a day. You know, sometimes there are things that you want to happen and you're just being very intentional and you want, that's what you want. So you add that into your life or you're speaking about your characteristics in a positive light. We don't want to have any backhanded daily affirmations. Like these are pure positivity for yourself. I am in love with myself. I think that I'm gorgeous. Not even that, I am gorgeous. Not even I think that I'm gorgeous. We wanna stay in the present and you know, keep them as, you, wanna, you can keep them as long and short as you want, but the shorter they are, you can remember more but, or better. So like say you do 10 affirmations a day, you can do 10 of the same affirmations if that works more for you, better for you, or they can be different. But, you know, that means you have to think about it. <laughs> think about the different affirmations, but that's up to you. Affirmations are best done in the mirror because you're talking to yourself. Sometimes if I, I worked with a girl who had issues with doing affirmations in the mirror, she just at first, she just couldn't do it. It was like, okay, that's fine. Do affirmations to a picture of yourself. 
You can do affirmations to a picture of yourself when you were younger if you want. You know, and help your younger self to grow up, you know, in the best way possible. And I don't mean rush them to grow up. <laughs> I mean, maybe the way you grew up was not beneficial for your younger self at the time. So you're giving them some extra strength to get to where you are now, some extra love. And you're thinking about that inner child and you're working with them. Because we all still have our inner child to everything that we have been through. So we want to do daily affirmations as a reminder that we are amazing and we should be so happy to be here. Do you know that the odds of us being here is like really low? Because there were thousands to millions of sperm that went from your dad to your mom and you happen to be the sperm that got through the egg? Like, could you believe it? It's not like it was, there were two sperm and it was the two of you and one of you got through. There were thousands and millions of sperm and you got through. You survived. It happened to be at the right time. There was an egg present. So if you think about it, you're already a blessing, no matter what. So just keep telling yourself, you know, keep being positive with yourself. So these are the four steps to start off your journey to decreasing your anxiety. If this is not the start for you, make sure that you have these four steps in place at least, like minimum. And this is where the 30 minutes a week come in. 30 minutes minimum a week. <laughs> we want to give ourselves at least 30 minutes to do these things. The breathing, you do whenever you need it. All day, all night, whenever, however many times you need it. The journaling, you can use your 30 minutes to do the journaling. You may need that much time. Then again, you can journal in five minutes if that's all you need to get through that issue. But usually you need at least 20 minutes to really go through it. Eating and diet and physical exercise, that's an everyday choice, right? You can take the 30 minutes and plan your food out for the week but only if that plan is really gonna come to fruition. If you're not the type that, you know, really follows a schedule, starting off now might be a little stressful. And we wanna do baby steps. And then for your daily affirmations, you know, we, mostly everyone, everyone that I know, has a mirror in their bathroom, you can put a sticky on your mirror with maybe five to 10 affirmations and just say them every day, you know, while you're getting ready. Give time to yourself every week, 30 minutes every week, minimum, you deserve it. You will always deserve to have more positivity in your life, even if it comes from you and not someone else. You know, we have to, get over the mindset that someone else will make us happy. Drop a fire in the chat if you feel that you can do this for yourself. If you can be there for yourself, if you can give yourself hugs, you know, daily to weekly. So the reality is, even if you only use just a tiny fraction of the information that we covered today, and it was good information, wasn't it? I thought it was good because I don't really have anxiety anymore. And these were things that I used all the time. Even with all the information that we covered today, don't you feel like you've taken a huge leap towards reducing the one ignore that little typo 
to reducing things that you need to do to alleviate your anxiety. We're starting off on a positive tip of consistency and practice. And I wanna help you. I wanna be there for you. I want to, you know, I have two programs, a four week program and a six week program. Crazy amounts of accountability, because that's what we need a lot of times when we start these things. So far today, we discussed four powerful steps to get your mind in the position to fall into relaxation instead of into stress. Once again, just a little recap. We talked about controlling your breathing, journaling your thoughts, keeping your body well-nourished and active, as well as your daily affirmations. Now that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more we can talk about and we will talk about. So if you're interested in joining the Fear Fighter program, click the link down below. And I'm very happy to work with you and just get you to the place where I am. That's why I'm here. This is what I'm passionate about. I don't think I said at the beginning, but I'm also a pharmacist. And I've talked to patients about anxiety and depression and their medications and everything, ways to treat it for 12 years at least, because I've been a pharmacist for 12 years. Um, so let me help you. Thank you so much for your time. Did you enjoy that? I hope you did. Please click below and just familiarize yourself with the program. And if you know anyone who's interested or anyone who can, you know, benefit from a program such as this one, please let them know, send them my way. Thank you so much.